I recently went to Salem, Massachusetts. And if you're asking yourself why, well, <laughs> according to Google, it's a city that is steeped in history, culture, tradition, and intersects with haunted houses, Halloween parades, and for many, visiting Salem during the month of October is a bucket list experience. Okay, you had me at bucket list, we gotta go. So that's what I did. I booked tickets and I went. And after going, I can definitely say whether I will or will not be going back. So to come to the conclusion of whether I felt that this really was a bucket list worthy place to visit and whether I would come back or not, I created a tier list that I am going to be ranking throughout this video. So if you are curious of the tiers, which I will be talking about. I will also have them linked as chapters below so you can skip to each one or you can just watch the whole thing, which honestly, you probably should just watch the whole thing. I mean, you're here anyways, might as well watch. Okay, so here are all the things we are going to be covering. Museums, shopping, food, crowds, transportation, accommodations, architecture, history, safety, and last but not least, well, this isn't a part of the tier. This is just going to be the conclusion of the video. It's if I would come back to Salem after ranking all of these things. So stay tuned because I'm going to be taking you on quite the adventure. And this video definitely did not turn out how I expected it to. So it's quite funny looking back on it now, uh, remembering how I thought it was going to go prior to showing up there. That being said, let's go to Salem. <laughs> So we are now in front of the Ropes Mansion and yeah, we might go inside. If not, we're gonna go around to the back to visit the gardens. There are some beautiful gardens in the back of it. The Ropes Mansion built in 1727 was home to four generations of the Ropes family and is recognized as one of New England's most significant and thoroughly documented historical houses. It was timed entry only. You did have to have some sort of reservation. We did not get to go in, unfortunately. Next, we went to the famous witch house. I asked my friend where I should go visiting Salem for the first time and she said, this place is a must. I made it to the witch's house and there's actually no one here. There was a tour outside and that's why there's people in this clip. But as you can tell, in front of the house, no one is there except a couple of people. You're free to take photos. There is no line, so good news. I don't know how much it is to go into this place, but we're gonna go find out right now. It's $9? $9. It's $9. Oh, oh, that's really cheap. Welcome to my crib. Your eyes are so blue. Upon entering, I found out you could not take video, so there is nothing to share here, but you didn't miss much. So we just got back from the witch's house. I'm a bit disappointed <laughs> because there was, A, no witches. I just wish that the witch museum would have had more information instead of just talking about different medicines and different things that they did back in the day. There was a couple of things that made sense to the witch trials that I was interested in learning about, but everything else just didn't really seem on brand in my opinion. And based off of other reviews I have read as well, people feel the same way. We are going to the Witch Dungeon Museum. We chose to go to this one because uh, it's the highest rated one I could find on Yelp. That's more than three stars. This is three and a half stars. You can't film in there. So we're not going in and it's a show. It's not a museum. The if sign we... says museum in like 12 places. So yeah. a little bit of a bait and switch. We're at the um I don't know exactly what this is. It's not live action. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call this? Narration. That and a little walking tour that's guided afterwards. So we're gonna see how this is. Take his oath, which would make them witches, like some of the older women 
who flew into the field from Salem Town. She was in her 20s or her 30s. She was only 16 during the trials. If you guys come up further this way, I'll tell you about our next... This is really scary. I didn't know that she was only 16. Right? Mm -hmm. I didn't think they would look like the one in the middle. It's like every single <laughs> corner I turned, there's at least five mannequins that look like him. I actually liked it. Way more informative than the other place that I went to. It was kind of like a walkthrough and there were scenes set up and the tour guide talked about the different scenes. It was only $13 and I'd say it was worth it. And it was rated 3.9 stars on Yelp. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know very much um, about Salem and I feel like there's a lot of like rumors that aren't true so I, I enjoyed it. It was like factual set things straight. It is very simple though but $13 I feel like your expectations aren't going to be very high and uh, I don't know. It was just fun, a little campy. I also stopped at the Free Museum outside of the Witch Trials Memorial, and this contained more information than the Witch Museum, in my opinion. If you are looking for witchy items, if you're looking for things you've never seen in any other store in your life, this is the place you will find them. I'm personally not the biggest fan of buying things when I'm traveling, but if you are a fan of shopping, these stores will not disappoint. And one thing I noticed is that I did not see a lot of souvenir stores. It was mostly small businesses with items that were made by artists all over the world. This is Housewitch. We're located in Salem, Massachusetts. We're like a modern metaphysical shop. We sell a lot of witchcraft tools, home supplies. Everything here is either made in-house or made by friends of the shop. So like independent artists, a lot of female or queer owned artists. And over here we have all of our spell kits. This is like the main thing that we're big for. They're all um, designed with everything you need to perform the ritual and then the steps you need to go through it. And then all of these candles are a big seller. These are made by our friend Katie and they're exclusive to the shop. But I think all of us just really want to be an accessible place for people to learn about witchcraft and make it practical for them. I have a lot of favorites. The first candle I ever bought here was the Sirens. This is coconut, gardenia, and jasmine. And this one is also exclusive to the shop. So that one's special for us. bunch of different unique gifts here if you're looking for a souvenir. There's also hats and clothing. There are like posters, jewelry, lots of things that represent Salem and I think some of the items I'm seeing here are done by artists and which is really great because support small business. This is Emporium 32. We've been here since 2016, so seven years, uh, but we've also been in business, I think, for a total of 15 years. We used to do, my wife and I, on the sword, um, we used to make a lot more jewelry and leather work and such, and then kind of expand to this, to the point where we now carry about 150 different artists and vendors. We've got a second shop down the street the, at the Hawthorne Hotel. It's called 1925 at the Hawthorne. It's all Art Deco themed. The idea here is kind of where, like, Victorian clutter. So most of our artists tend to be uh, US-made, small artists, um, people who are friends of ours or that we've discovered. Uh, we've been the, the first store for a lot of big artists who have now kind of exploded and we are their first shop. But our idea is to go with a vintage lifestyle, that kind of proper aesthetic, a lot of the classics. Uh, we're kind of like the small classic department store, but just not very much more scaled down style. I found this cute bookstore called Wicked Good Books off of the main strip. I was curious to see what kind of stuff their shop had. They had lots of things related to magic, lots of horror, thrillers, and they had a local poet section, which I thought was really cute. And 
I couldn't help myself. I had to go into one of their local thrift stores. I cannot tell you the amount of Halloween stuff that they had here was insane. I go looking for this stuff all throughout the year at my thrift stores and I can never find anything. But of course, I come to Salem and they just have absolutely everything. So I'm in a thrift store right now and uh, they have a lot of discounted Halloween stuff, which is super rare but I also find it very cool. So if you're looking for decorations or costumes, this is a really good spot for it, along with decor or maybe even souvenirs. I'm finding a couple of things, but there's a lot of home decor here and a lot of big decorations that you could use to decorate your house. Nonetheless, if you love antiques, this is a really good spot to visit. First up was the Gulu Gulu Cafe, and this was recommended to me by a friend who comes here every time she visits, and it's also one of the highest rated places on Yelp. So I was very excited to try this place because I figured it would be a hit. Their prices were very affordable in my opinion, and they had lots of really easy options for when you were on the go. It's good. Yeah. I do like it. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe a little bit more espresso. Maybe you got the more espresso one. I don't know. So I got the turkey bacon wrap and I didn't like the pickle. Kind of spicy, sweet, and I just wasn't a fan. I don't know. I guess it's small, but the wrap, there was a lot of meat in it, but I just think the service was so bad. They forgot our water. I feel like you didn't even get your extra shot. We don't know for sure because they didn't verify when they sat it down in front of us and we got the same drink, so I don't know. Yeah, I asked for an extra shot in mine. Coffee hot probably could have been stronger. Also, I didn't know it was gonna be an Asiago cheese bagel. I probably would have changed my choice if I knew it was Asiago. Slight detail. Yeah, definitely it could have been a little bit faster given it wasn't too, 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 too crowded. It was fine. I've had definitely better restaurants in Salem. Unfortunately, wouldn't recommend it. I've had really bad luck eating out here so far, so hopefully we find something that's good to recommend. I don't know. <laughs> the next spot was Howling Wolf Taqueria. They very much have a bar atmosphere with sports games playing with an array of food items at an affordable price. I ordered the shredded chicken burrito for $10.95. I did have to send it back twice because it was cold and the second time they ended up refunding me. This is mid, mid tier. My burrito wasn't hot. It's spicy hot, but it wasn't temperature hot. But it was all right. They tried something unique and we used to give them that, but they didn't hit the mark. Peanut just squirt vinegar in her eye. <laughs> we always know this is my favorite part when I get to eat food, and this is not my favorite part tonight. It was just cold twice, and I'm disappointed, but I'll heat it up when I get home and I'll finish it then, I guess. But. I believe I have food poisoning from one of the places I ate at, so. Can I get the tofu bibimbap? Do you want the tofu steamed or fried? Um, fried. I have no idea what this is, but apparently. It's chicken katsu, and you're gonna want sauce on that. Oh, that's barbecue, interesting. I think that's separate, but everything. Not the biggest fan of this, but the chicken, this is very good. Good food option. Good. Mine was $12.95, I think. Hers is a lot of food. That was like 15 This is how you do it. This is what everyone would do. We love it. The next spot we visited was the Village Tavern. This appeared to be everyone's favorite, and everyone seemed to finish most of their food on their plates, so that's a really good sign. They had multiple bars, a back room for games with an arcade, and they also had a festive Halloween menu, which is something I was looking for when coming here. I did not eat here because I ate the burrito that gave me food poisoning right before, but now I wish I wouldn't have. I got clam chowder. It was $9. It's kind of a lot for a little bowl of clam chowder, but it tasted good. I got a Caesar salad, side of mashed potatoes, and the house margarita with a sugar rim. 
and it was $28 all together. I always come back here. I live an hour away, and this is where I come monthly. So I really like it. Um, this is my first time here. I got the chili and the side of uh, loaded mashed potatoes. My total was um, $19.21, and I would give this a 8 out of 10. I really liked it. It was good chili. The next cafe we visited was a favorite of someone in the group. I did not order anything when I was here, but the vibe of this place was very cute. I'm a big fan of cute cafes. This was probably one of the cuter ones that I saw. They had a collection of homemade loose leaf teas along with some other items, some scones, some sweet treats, and ah, yeah, I just liked this place. I can't say whether it was amazing or not because I did not try anything, but I'd say the vibe was on point. The next cafe we visited was the Red Line Cafe. I did not order anything here, but my friends did, and they said it wasn't the best, but they did have affordable, convenient items that were right off of that main road that you will walk down when you are in Salem, and very quick service. You will see some incredible architecture here. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before personally, especially the abundance of windows on all of the homes and including the well-known witch window, which is to prevent witches from flying in your home. Let's not forget about all the other windows on the house that they could also fly into, but the witch window is the only one witches care about. Anyways, they have made information very visible on all of the houses you will pass. So if they are historical in any way, there will be a plaque noting the year and sometimes even a little bit of information. But if you aren't one to kind of roam around to find those plaques, you can also look up the historical buildings on the City of Salem website. I will link it below for you. This is in case you don't want to do a walking tour, you can explore on your own and find stuff on your own. If you are a fan of archaic libraries, then this is one you want to check out when you are in Salem. This is one of the oldest membership libraries in America. I think it is number six on the list and it's one of the oldest libraries in Salem. I will be doing an entirely separate video just doing a tour of this library because there are some incredible things that I got to see and um, I'm not going to be sharing them in this video, but you'll just have to watch it then. Um, right now we're at the Salem Witch Village Cemetery with some old graves. There is no shortage of very old cemeteries located in this area that you can go to. The Salem Witch Trials Memorial is a very significant place for people to visit. This is located in the center of Salem and it provides a place for people to pay their respects and to remember the inspiring stories of personal courage revealed in 1692. There's also a map of all of the different tombstones here, including the oldest one. I also went to the Broad Street Cemetery, which holds Judge Jonathan Corwin, and his house is where the Witch's House Museum now resides. And the reason the Witch House Museum is what it is, is because it's the only structure still standing in Salem with direct ties to the Salem Witch Trials of 1692. one of the
the first churches in Salem. And we can't go in right now because there is a service going on. It is an active church, but pretty cool. To me, it kind of looks like a set from Evermore. Airbnbs in this area are very cute. They are historical and we got a themed Airbnb except it was a pretty penny. I think it was around $600 a night. We were only able to stay here because we were splitting it with 10 people. Otherwise, we would have never stayed here and we would have never stayed anywhere in the area if we didn't have a group of people to help us. It's very expensive to even get a hotel. You're looking at spending anywhere from $300 to $1,700 a night. So keep that in mind when you choose to visit. And this was even looking around September, not even in October. of people. I think because I went the second to last week of September that that's why and I was told by a lot of people who have been during October to not go during October just because it's incredibly packed. It's not fun. There's lines for food, attractions, there's lines to take photos in front of buildings. I will say it just wasn't really packed. There wasn't that many people. It was just kind of like a normal amount of people that you would see in any small city. As for safety, I walked around at night by myself. Everything seemed very safe. There's a lot of people roaming around on the streets. I didn't see anything sketchy happening. I didn't feel unsafe at any point in time. And that's a lot coming from a girl walking around by herself. Look, I've been to a lot of bad museums in my lifetime. And this place definitely has some of the worst I've ever experienced, but it's going to skippable for creativity. As for the museums, I think it was really unique. It kind of felt almost as if it was a Epcot show, like Spaceship Earth, where you just sit on a people mover going really slow and you go through different decades. There's someone narrating the story that you're going through. That's kind of what it reminded me of. It definitely felt a little bit like a theme park attraction and hello, my sweet, sweet kitty. As for food, you can probably guess where it's going to go. I have never been to a city and have had this many bad food experiences in my life because every time I travel, one of the best experiences is going to a restaurant and enjoying a meal because it's kind of that time of the day where you get to relax, chat, and fill your belly with nice good food, right? And uh, I just did not get that experience, like I said. I got food poisoning. Every other place I went to, the food was subpar at the best or it was just wasn't great. The one place that everyone said was their favorite was the place I didn't eat at because I ate my food poisoning burrito prior to going there, uh, which now looking back, I wish I wouldn't have. For shopping, I think they had such a good selection of things to choose from and they all came from lots of local artists and artists all over. So that being said, it's gotta go at the top of the list. As for history, I mean, it's a no brainer. This has to go at the top. I think the architecture, 10 out of 10, it's so unique to the place. It really is. There was about 15 windows on the front of one person's house. I just couldn't believe the amount of windows that I saw. I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. I enjoyed just walking around and looking at all the buildings and reading all the plaques to see what year they were built. So of course, architecture has to go on the top tier, which is bucket list. As for accommodations, pretty pricey. Not even just hotels, but Airbnbs as well are also very pricey. So I recommend if you're going to maybe try booking in advance if it's cheaper that way or going with a group of people and splitting a room. Because of the insane prices you will pay to visit here, I had to put it on skippable. The only reason it's not at the bottom tier is because if you had a group of people and you could split it, it could be affordable. As for crowds, I put it to the top tier, but this is specifically around the end of September. 
Safety is another one that is a 10 out of 10 for me. As well as transportation, just because the farthest spot that you could visit that was popular was a couple of miles and you could potentially walk that. My flight cost me $285. I put that on the almost amazing tier because I thought it was a pretty good price. When traveling, the most important experiences for me are visiting museums to understand the history and culture and trying good food. So because those are on the bottom of the list, it's not looking good. After going, I would say I would not go back. <laughs> looking back on the experience now, I 100% should have just done a walking tour. I think that would have been the best way to learn the most that I could with the time I had. I spent a lot to go be there and I didn't, it didn't feel like a bucket list thing. Unfortunately, didn't even see the leaves change. I did go too early. I was hoping at the end of September, it would have been you know, more of a fall setting, but it wasn't. But this was just my experience. Maybe it's hit or miss. It could, I mean, maybe I just didn't have the best experience going. Maybe for you, it might be great. Obviously, you know, if you wanna go, still go, don't listen to me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, this did not turn out the way I thought it was going to, so. I, I expected this to be a very happy, upbeat, me recommending you all these amazing places to go to. I did find some good shops, at least we got that, but yeah, it wasn't the best. It wasn't the best. So thanks for watching, and I hope you have a good time in Salem. If you go, okay. <laughs>